Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Q&A with a and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me is the inimitable Amy Rosenfeld. Welcome, Rosenfeld. Amy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My name is missing. My name is missing. That's why you no. don't know who I am. My sorry. name is missing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Apologies. I don't want to. Um... That's why people don't know who I am. <laughs> and anyway, Sharon. Um, no, that was me. Typing I was Dr. typing Reckon. before. I have a, a laptop next to me with the stream, and I was typing. I figured I could go in while I'm sitting here and chatting. But if you don't want me to, I won't. Chicago, yeah. Gaza. We have someone from Gaza. It's good. They need they they need some help out there. Chicago, seven Gaza. degrees. You well, know, that's um, much warmer than it was. They've like been in like a cold spell for like the last like three weeks that they've not seen for like sixty years or something. It's like mm. outrageous. Oh, look at this. This is funny. I have to tell you, you came in my dream last week. You gave me two books and told me to give a virology course. I said, I'm a computer guy. You replied, just try. I then woke up. That it's sounds a, like you. It's a good advice. Just try. Exactly. <laughs> Iceland. Wow. I think that might be our, um, <laughs> our first Coldest Iceland area. Person. Look at, look at this. Um, this is funny. Uh, Q&A with Vincent and old, what's her name? Because <laughs> I forgot to put your name up. Sorry. Sorry. What's her name? The nameless. Yeah, exactly. All right, here's like, a question. Who um, is she? Who said okay. that? Uh, no, this I'm is E.B. No, I, I can read. I just. I think that's familiar. I've seen that name before. I don't know. I don't know who she is. You know, what's her name? What up? It's fine. All right. Let's get let's move into some questions. All right, here's a tough one. I'm not sure I can answer. Uh, is it historically true that vaccines with mechanism presenting antigens from intracellular can stimulate T cell response better than vaccines with antigens deployed extracellularly? So yeah, you mean like an infectious vaccine where the antigens are presented from within as opposed to inactivated vaccines where they're pulled in from outside the cell. Do you know anything about that, Amy? No, I don't. But I didn't think that that's what it meant. You know, endogenous versus exogenous. Oh, you, that's you what know, it means? Yeah, because if you have an infectious vaccine, it's going to infect cells, and then those cells will present antigens via the endogenous pathway. And if you put a protein-based vaccine in... Um, It'll be taken up by antigen-presenting right. cells and processed by the exogenous pathway. So um, I, I'm not aware of a difference because, you know, both polio vaccines are. Um, I don't. Well, know they're very cells, effective, though. but but the thing is, is they have diff, diff, They're completely different mechanisms, right? Yeah. OPV yep. gives you mucosal immunity, blah blah blah, and IPV does not. Yeah, I don't you know, know about T-cells, very, though, right? right? We don't know much about T-cell immunity there, so I have to take yeah, a pass, but, but that's we a really might. good, good but question. But we might. Get back to us in a year. I'm going to I'm gonna favorite this comment because I want to keep it and okay. get back to but it. But this is part of the thingy that we're doing, right? The grant proposal that we're going to write? Well, yeah, it's a shoot-off of the grant proposal, yeah, right? that's right. Um. But the other thing is, is um, what was I going to say? Oh, crap. I forgot now. Okay. Here's, here's one for you, Amy. Love you both. Okay. Now, here's Isn't one for nice really for, um, Can you explain the science between SI RNAs? This is for Amy. Behind s small interfering RNAs? Yeah. So small interfering RNAs are very short RNAs. They're like 20 to 24 nucleotides. So they are completely homologous or complementary to the strand that you are targeting. And then they form a duplex and recruit um, argonaut and dicer. And some of them, they just cause the RNA to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
pulled out into like processing or stress granules where it's silenced and others cause the RNA to be degraded and chopped up. And we, and we take advantage of them all the time for reducing proteins in cell cultures. Yep. Angela wants to know your opinion of persons with long COVID being vaccinated. Does it negatively impact the malfunctioning immune response to natural infection? Does it I, negatively I, impact? Well, your infection has, your natural infection has been resolved many months beforehand. And yeah. it appears that getting vaccinated again, if you have long-term COVID, some of the data suggests that it actually um, facilitates resolution of your symptoms. And we know people who have long-term COVID who've gotten vaccinated and seem to be perfectly fine. Abraham, thank you for your super chat. We'll get to your question. Oh, Boulder, Asheville, North Carolina, California, Germany. Hey, well, some Romeo. person oh. had the audacity to say it was 65 or 63 when it is 28 here in New York. And if you know, I don't like cold weather. Isn't that Good true? Night. Uh, Romeo's going to bed. Good night, Romeo. Okay. Hawaii, Texas. I'm scrolling through, Amy. That's why I'm just reading off. Okay, this is a question for Amy. How are the plaque assays this week? <laughs> they are good. They are good. Can't you tell they Amy's are... in a good mood? The plaque assays are good. She's in a good mood, right? Exactly. When I have good data and plaque assays are, are filling my incubators up the wazoo, I'm always happy. They're so good. Is there a treatment for cytokine release syndrome? Is that the multi? Is that well, the multi organ syndrome name now? What did you call the multi organ or the long or was that long term COVID that uh, has that was some long term name? that has the the long post whatever I can't remember it doesn't stick on the tongue. I don't think yeah. there's a treatment cytokine release syndrome. You know, they're using steroids. In some cases, they work, but not in every case. So I yeah. would say there's no treatment at the moment. No, and aren't isn't that what TOSI is? Is also a antibody against the cytokine, like IL six. Yeah, tocilizumab and and all the other anti cytokine anti cytokine receptor monoclonals. Well, they're not so many, but but we don't know yeah. the right combination, right? That's the problem. No, hey, look, you we have don't. a fan. You have a fan in Houston, an Amy fan in Houston. That's great. Maybe MK. one day we'll get to go to Houston. MK. Well, this person MKs. just got a new new appointment. That's, That's great. great. MK, congratulations. Is that a Howard? Is that a Henry Moore in her little icon thingy? I don't know. MK, what kind of sculpture is that? I don't know. Melbourne. Really we got somebody it. from Melbourne. You've been is, there. Is the spike one protein or many? It is one protein that is repeated. It's a trimer. Right. It's a trimer. <laughs> If it changes as a drop, add, replace one amino acid with another. And the changes, you can have a change of one amino acid to another. And or you can have a deletion. You can have a deletion, right? Usually, or usually you, can you don't even add, have right? An insertion. You I don't, it seen... depends, right? It depends on what, what kind of protein it is. Yeah. Sandy, thanks for your super chat. We'll get, uh, we'll get to you. All right. If you get COVID and my system clears the virus, I'm immune right away, right? I.e., I can't get reinfected by an infectious family member. Is, I don't think that's correct. Is it, Amy, to say I'm immune right away? No, it's not correct. You know, the, the clearing of the infection, you know, for SARS-CoV-2, it's like after the peak of virus uh, shedding, it's, it's only like five seven days. To, yeah, five days. So. It can't be a full-blown immune response. So yep. I would wait at least a month, right, Amy? Yeah, I would wait. Can any type of vaccine provide immunity this soon? doesn't matter. You, your immune system has a clock. It, goes, it doesn't matter how it gets stimulated. It goes by that clock. It's like okay. you can't make bacteria reproduce faster, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, 
what do you think about whether people are going to be able to transmit the virus after being vaccinated? Now, this is a kind of speculation question, right, Amy? Uh, I think it's getting closer and closer to actual data. Mm -hmm. paper so where, data. Are you lean where are you leaning to, Amy? I'm leaning towards vaccine will reduce transmission. Yeah. I, what are I, you I, leaning towards? I agree with you 100%. Uh, Dr. Rosenfeld. I, I think the data so far are leaning towards that, yeah. Um, Yane, there are no stupid questions. Uh, what are monoclonal antibodies? Amy is a good one to answer this. Mm, why? Because we're working on them? Yeah. Uh, so monoclonal antibodies are antibodies that recognize only one epitope or one short peptide sequence right one like how many amino acids is an epitope 10 i think it depends well yeah. like some i think can be like 20 i think some of them in in spike are 20 but like the bc loop is 10 right yeah that's right the bc loop is the is an epitope on polio virus and it's 10 and I think that the two discontinuous epitopes uh, for 68 are like eight and eight and nine. Mm -hmm. So I think that's 17. So these are, so in your blood, when you have antibodies, you have a mixture of all antibodies against different epitopes. It's polyclonal. Yes. But in, in the lab, not, you can make single specificities and that's called monoclonal. And that's what, some people are being treated with one or two monoclonals, right? Yes. So, yeah, and I hope that helps. Uh, don't worry to ask questions like that. That's what we're here for. Yes. Right. Callista. Is this is Callista it, oh, of the she, masks? I was going to say, she made our beautiful masks. Thank you, Callista. Nice hair. If that's yours, I don't know. Can you explain the difference between flu and coronavirus? Great. Sorry? I think the hair is great. The perm, the perm and the blonde, I think it's great. It reminds me of like some really famous characters. Yeah, yeah that is Callista of the face masks of the hairdresser. Yeah. The great. She right, makes what's the beautiful difference face masks. between flu and Corona? And you got one, didn't you, Amy? I did. I love it. And it smells what's like lavender. So she wants to know the difference between flu and Corona with respect to antigenic drift, especially. So they're two different viruses. I did my PhD thesis on influenza virus. It's an enveloped RNA virus, negative strand RNA with spikes in the envelope, a hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. It causes in humans a respiratory infection, which sometimes can go into the lung and cause pneumonia and be serious. But typically you don't get the cytokine storm that you see with SARS-CoV-2. When you say coronavirus, that includes SARS-CoV-2, but there are also some common cold coronaviruses that cause mild infections in humans. Now, SARS-CoV-2 is a different family, enveloped RNA virus, but plus polarity. And um, much longer genomes, up to 30,000 bases. And now they can cause mild upper tract infections or pneumonia. And in the case of SARS-CoV-2 and SARS-1, this cytokine, I don't want to call it a cytokine storm, post-infection inflammatory phase. Now, antigenic drift, we used to think, well, we know that influenza viruses undergo antigenic drift. So we may have to change the vaccine every year for influenza virus. And we didn't think coronaviruses did it, but now we know they do. And starting with the common cold coronas, a paper came out from Jesse Bloom's group a few months ago showing that they undergo antigenic drift. And now we see SARS-CoV-2 drifting. And it may be that we need a, a vaccine, a new vaccine for SARS-CoV-2 every couple of years. So we'll see. Amy, this one's for you. Okay. What do we know about T-cell responses to the variants? So Shane Crotty and Alexander Sethi, who you're going to have on TWIV to discuss this, right, Vincent? I am. I am. So they have a manuscript on bioarchives that says the the T cell response is very efficient against the variants, that there is no difference, basically. Mm -hmm. 
which is really great because it is thought that T cells are really the important component of immune responses uh, during coronavirus infections. Yeah. I think it's very really exciting. Great. Very exciting. It is. I think it's really exciting. So I can't wait to hear what they have to say. Okay. Kang wants to know if RNA virus replication is error prone, what makes all the vaccine mRNA consistently identical? Well, it's not RNA. It's not virus. They've, ma they've manipulated T7 to be very processive. And it's made stuff. in vitro by a, a DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Fewer errors. I'm sure that's not error free, right, Amy? I would imagine it's not. But I imagine that the amount of errors that is made is they've optimized it to like be very, very few. Plus, I imagine that if it were error prone, that you that maybe some of the RNA is, you know, recoded so that you could accommodate those errors, you know. Can COVID-19 vaccine activate a dormant Epstein Barr virus. Hmm. So you know some people, Amy, who get the these vaccines have a inflammatory reaction, right? They can get yes. fever. And so these things could react to be me. You had fever and a headache, right? Yeah, I had fever for like three days. So that could trigger a latent herpes virus infection like EBV, sure. Absolutely. Herpes simplex, EBV, and other herpes viruses. I don't know of any Reports, but it could, yeah. Wisconsin, yeah. Detroit. Detroit is getting his second Moderna today. Starting to, he got it. Body aches. Yes, you will have body aches. Maybe headache, fever. I had fever. Amy had headache, but Amy came to work and did plaque assays. I did. I also took my dad to get vaccinated that day, and then like I had night fever for like another four days. Okay. Well, this one is tough for me. Could COVID-19 drive latent TB reactivation through the lymphopenia like HIV from Glasgow? Could be. You know, no, Amy, I don't know if you know this, but when my dad many years ago got cancer, it reactivated his latent TB, which was all over in his kidneys in particular. His kidneys weren't working. So um, I, I, I could if, if we have lymphopenia. Yeah, I, I don't know if it happens, but it, I think theoretically it could happen. Uh, Claudia wants to know, was there a new strain last year from Europe that had a more stable spike that didn't break as easily? So What does a new, break mean? Well, you know, the it didn't shed the, uh, the S1 part of spike. That's D614G. Uh. So Claudia, well, I didn't know that that's what, what broke meant. Sorry. <laughs> now, Claudia, <laughs> I, didn't, so I never heard that. This strain, the yes, arose early in February. D614G, a single, sorry, did I say strain? Sorry, it's a variant. Yeah, you said uh, strain. Sorry. And um, it now all the isolates pretty much globally have this amino acid change. It must give the virus good fitness, I suppose, but... You, know, you can't call it a strain because only an official international expert committee could do that. So, well, it doesn't have a different phenotype. Yes, it really doesn't have a different reproducible unique phenotype. Okay. I'm in San Antonio. What are your thoughts about the governor of Texas canceling the mask mandate? Well, if we want to quote Joe Biden, it's Neanderthalish. Is that what he said? Yes. <laughs> He said the tech, the governors of Texas and Mississippi, which have gotten rid of their mask mandates, is Neanderthalish. I think that says enough. I don't I think, think we need a, to expand. It's a bad idea because if, if viruses rebound in Texas, it could threaten the rest of the country and the world. It's not fair. No, it's not fair. So, as I said, I think I don't really need to expand beyond Neanderthalish. Okay. Although okay. the one other word I would have used is selfish. Um, so do mRNA vaccines cause cell lysis? No. They shouldn't. What if the 
cell making were attacked by a T cell, well, probably wouldn't have a CTL in time to do that. I think not. But Brienne has said they do in the TWIV. That's, but you probably don't agree with that, right? Okay. Uh, Leo wishes there was an online glossary of the scientific terms you use so non-scientists watching your videos could pause when they hear the terms and look them up. Well, if anybody wants to volunteer to, to help me do that, I'll make it. I just need help. Um, and you can't help me. I have too me, many Amy. jobs. No, I have you too can't many do it. jobs. But I'm talking about someone here in the in the chat. If you want to help me, you could, for example, send me the words and I could get the definitions and we could make a website. I think it's a great idea. It is a good idea. But I'm already the talent agent, the real estate agent, and I have a lab. I, I have too many jobs. Yeah, no, I don't want you to do anything more, Amy. You have your... You have your um, work cut out for you. And and by the way, in connection with the uh, the Texas question, I see in the in my chat here, didn't they find all the known variants of concern in Houston? Yes. That's another reason why you don't want to take off your masks in Texas because all the variants are there and you don't want to encourage their spread. All right. For Bonnie, uh, Amy, if all or most adults are vaccinated, will the virus change to better infect children who are not vaccinated? <laughs> I guess it's possible, but it, but it already seem infects to, them pretty well. It, I was right? going to say it seems to infect them pretty well and not cause disease. So I'm not sure if, even if it did infect children more efficiently, they're not as the percentage of children who develop severe disease is not as high as those who, uh, as adults, do. So then, what's the problem? It's just another cold. To make a bivalent vector vaccine, could each vector virion carry DNA for two target proteins? You could certainly make a multiple, a multivalent uh, vectored vaccine, sure. And mm -hmm. I think Amy likes that idea. She likes more than Spike, right? Yes, I do. So here's Abraham's super chat question. Thank you, Abraham. Why don't COVID antibody tests measure T cells? Because measuring T cells is very difficult and it's yeah, time consuming. You have to, it's not as easy as you take serum, you mix it with virus, and then you do, in our case, a plaque assay. It's yeah, much harder. Um, yeah. And I think that's a shortcoming because T cells are important, right, Amy? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Maria wants to know, have you seen the CNN article about women getting swollen lymph nodes on mammograms as a side effect of the vaccine? I have not. Yeah, I'm careful about what I say about the news reporting. But, you know, a, a swollen lymph node in your armpit, it makes perfect sense because when they put the vaccine in your deltoid, those are the local lymph nodes. So they should swell because they're reacting to the vaccine. I don't think that's a problem. Well, you, Amy? I don't, but what I want to know is, were men included in the study? Because if you're only looking at women, then it sounds really bad, right? Because that's generally a problem. Um, like people look at lymph nodes for various other things. I think even some cancer testing, like yeah, like yeah. Uh, breast cancer testing and stuff. But if so. If you only looked at women, it's skewed. If you looked at men and women, I would expect that the male lymph mm -hmm. nodes would be equally swollen. Yeah. So I don't right. really, you know. So Vinny Rack really, says, my I wife, don't really get it. Vinny Rack says, my wife got a swollen lymph node in one armpit. Yeah, that that's perfectly normal. Did you get swollen lymph nodes, Amy? Yes. Okay, you just put your fingers under here and you can feel them. Just like if you have a cold, you could palpate your lymph nodes under your throat there and you can feel them swollen. Yeah. I mean, but you know, I don't know. I get a lot of swollen lymph nodes. It's fine. Um, is there any information on whether any of the COVID vaccines may cause enhanced disease later if we were exposed? Is it too early for any data? So too Amy, early. in the date in the J and J report, it said there was no evidence of because, you know, some of the people who were vaccinated did get infected. They said there was no evidence of vaccine-enhanced disease so far. But it is a bit early, yeah. 
Yeah, but I don't, I think that the hypothesis going is that there is no vaccine enhanced disease. And is that a euphemism for ADE? It's a different. Yeah. Okay. Different. Um, have you started wearing two masks? It's a good, rec is it a good recommendation? It kept my face really warm today. I'm in Montreal. <laughs> well, because it's cold in Montreal. Nobody wants to go to Montreal in March. Um, Amy might go in August, right? I might. My friend is having her second child. Um, um, so I think it's a probably a good recommendation. I've seen the CDC data, and the idea is you wear a surgical mask and then a cloth mask, or they say you could wear multi-cloth layer masks. That would be fine, too. I still wear just one. So does Amy. We have Callista's masks, which are amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Callista. Plus, think? I think she has a filter in it, so I yeah, think she it's has a good. filter. What do you think of the efficacy of J and J? They're giving it to teachers in Wisconsin because it's one shot. I think it's I great. I love, I love the efficacy. Especially here's the thing: it was 100 percent against hospitalization and death, even in South Africa. And I think it's really, a great vaccine. It's really what we care about. And you can put it in the fridge for three months. I love it. I think if it's I great. didn't have my Moderna's, I'd, I'd do it. You don't get to choose. You just go I to know. the day and they, you, they harpoon you. And then that's the end of it. There's no like, it's not a restaurant. Here, let me order up this. And could I have my steak rare? I have yeah. a, a, we have a super chat from Carlita. This is for you, Amy. Does anybody have a theory as to why paralysis related to polio and Amy's virus affects children in a narrow age range? Amy's virus. Yeah, my virus. My virus is good virus. After you <laughs> answer this, can you go get your virus and show it to people? You can't see my virus. It's too small. No, the one on your, the model you have there on the shelf. Oh, my model? You want to see my model? Yeah, but answer right. the question first. First answer the All question. Right. So it's thought that children it's thought that children get paralysis from E B sixty eight when they're younger versus when you get older is because between the first year of life you're protected from your maternal antibodies and then that wanes and then you have to get exposed and develop um an immune response. And that's the age at which you are the most naive towards enteroviruses. Okay. Um, it's slightly different than the polio idea, which was partially that, but also sanitation cleanup. Now you want to see my virus? Yeah. Why don't you go get it while I continue with this? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I thought the virus needed ACE2 to enter a cell. How can the mRNA get into the cell with just a lipid? Well, yeah, the lipid delivery package allows it to get into any cell, no matter what receptors on the surface, because the lipid carrying the mRNA fuses with the cell and gets in. So don't need ACE2. Okay. Canada just approved AstraZeneca. That's correct. They're talking about delaying the second dose four months. Does this make sense? In fact, yes, in the UK trial, delaying the second shot actually allows it to work better. So I, that is actually a reasonable approach. Amy, did you bring your virus? Yeah, I brought my virus. So this that's my virus. Tell, tell well, everyone what. Uh, this, ooh, don't, I can't break it. This is my EV68 particle. So you see the three, you see the three d printed baryon and. Blue is VP1 and red is VP2 and yellow is VP3. See, you see, you see how it's like got canyons and mesas and stuff. And then it's really cool. Then it opens up, Ooh. then falls off the base, which is not so good. Then it opens up and you see the green, which is VP4. See? It's gorgeous. Just, it's beautiful. It just needs a little RNA. Yeah, but no I bet RNA you now, yeah. if we were to image the particle, we could find the RNA. So I have here a, a, a SARS-CoV-2 model. I'll bring it up in a bit as soon as we it's get to some It's not as pretty as EV-68. EV-68 is the prettiest. That's right. 
Don't forget, <clears throat> remind people to click like. Yes, people, we have 467 people here, which is just amazing, frankly, that 460 plus people want to hear us talk about viruses. We welcome you all. And remember to check the thumbs up, which is right down there below the video window. There's a finger like this. And so far, we have only 79. Let's go, folks. Uh, what do you think now of more and more places delaying the second dose? What do you think, Amy? I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, I think the this, the AstraZeneca data look good. I think that. there's a whole paper on Pfizer data that I sent you from JAMA yeah, or New said England the first Journal. Dose Protection is great after the first dose, so you could delay the second dose. Remember, yeah. you do want a second dose because you want to make sure you get the great memory, right? Right. I think, you know, when we first said that maybe you shouldn't delay, we didn't have enough data, right? And now that we're starting to have more data, I think it's great. I think, I think the biggest problem is, as I said, you're going to forget to go. And then the numbers will decrease and you'll say, oh, I don't need to go because there's no pandemic anymore. Uh, this. Uh, wow, she's Diem. going to. Good. Yeah. Working at a vaccine clinic. Ank RN here. Congratulations. And thank you for your service. That's good. Uh, Abraham said, I'm fed up with the scaremongering press regarding the New York variant. Yeah, you know what it's called, right? You use the word. I'm going to put it right up here on the screen. Well, no, you got to make small. it bigger. If you're going to put it up, make it bigger in purple and in bold. Come on. That's a lot of demands, Kathy. I'm Amy. Sorry. <laughs> Is it a scariant or a variant? Yeah, I think it's really inappropriate for the press to go crazy and say these are all really bad. Because we don't, all they're looking at is neutralizing antibodies. And we know, as Amy has just said, T cells are really important. And the variants don't affect T cell recognition or uh, CD4 or CD8 T cell recognition at all. No, so, so that's why you need to have them on. I will get them the on. The Bobsy Thank twins. You. Michael is a World War II War, Korean and Vietnam vet. Thank you for your service, Michael. We appreciate it. Stay safe. I think he's the one who wrote in that he's in Afghanistan several weeks ago. Uh, what's a plaque assay? What are you working on, Amy? A plaque assay? A plaque assay is the best thing in the world when it works. It's the worst thing in the world when it doesn't work. No? It's a way of, it's a way of measuring infectious viruses, right? right? I can show you a plaque assay. Can I show the Microbe TV logo, Amy? Yeah. So you see, but um, don't you have a real one? Don't you have yeah, any? I, I'd of have the to photos? find it. But but this in the middle, this plate uh, is a plaque assay where each of those clearings was made by a virus, and you can count them and you can me measure the virus titer. Yep. So what am I working on? I'm working on lots of things. So one, I'm looking at. I'm disproving that there's any correlation with temperature sensitivity and uh, viruses that were uh, isolated early when the virus was first identified as to today, looking at interferon responses, looking at antibodies, looking at cross-reactivity. I do a lot. Making no, infectious you're gonna hear, clones. You're going to hear so much from Amy in the coming months. She's doing hot stuff. Really cool. I'm very excited. I got a new two hundred thousand dollar machine courtesy of Ian's lab. <laughs> yeah, we didn't pay for it. We don't have that kind of money. But it's actually I didn't get it. I'm I'm allowed. To, they're being very. I should be really honest. They're very generous in letting us use it. Yeah, we just brought it over here. That's all. Well, it was right. sitting in a box, and they weren't Amy, using it. I wonder if the second shot being hard on some people might predict that some people might have worse disease with a later exposure. I don't think no. so. We've, we've said this before. It's, there's really no correlation, no. No, I mean, some years I get really sick from the flu vaccine. Yeah. Okay. Amy, this is for you. Why can pregnant women take a flu vaccine anytime but are told to take Tdap between 27 
37 weeks. Any other vaccines pregnant can't take or have limitations? I don't even know what DDAP is. Yeah, tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis. What is the A? What's the A? Yeah. Tip, uh, tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. It's the A yeah. was put in there to make it <laughs> easy to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It is funny. I'm not an MD. I I don't I I am not I don't I don't pretend to be an MD. I I don't know, but I imagine that the antibodies from tetanus and stuff are cross the placenta and help or you know are communicated to the baby after it's after its birth or something. Yeah, and we, it helps we, protect we don't, it. Uh, but we don't I don't know. I admit- don't I don't, I don't, I don't like to answer questions that are medical. I'm not a physician. Sandy, thank you for your super sticker. Okay, very Nika, where it's 4 a.m. in uh, Moscow. Say we have an adenovirus vector intranasal vaccine. Will a common cold adenovirus be able to recombine with the vector? No, because these are non-replicating vectors, right, Amy? Right. So they won't. Right. Uh, does Moderna uh, make vaccine make both IgG and IgM? Yes. And IgM it makes first, IgA, I would assume. And IgA and then IgG, right. Yeah. Can you help me understand the founder effect? And it has anything to do with how your body will respond to booster vaccines later. So uh, do you mean, Amy, do you know what the founder effect is? Is that original antigenic sin? I guess. I never heard. I, I guess. I mean, if you're in the context of an immune response, but I don't know. I thought that question was confusing to different ideas, like the founder effect of like a variant in a population. And then, yeah, yeah. Then something about, I don't know, vaccine something or other. I don't know. I found it very hard to understand because, as I said, I think it has like, two separate components that are not related and then somebody's trying to relate them. I don't, I don't quite get it. So I, think you, I would I think just it's about... discuss the founder effect. Okay. Right. But I Cause think... that's a, that's a virus that, you know, comes very early on and then I don't know. Propagates takes over. because it's, it's right. in the right place at the right time. Right. Right. And does this have anything to do with how your body is going to respond to boosters? No, not really. No, it depends where the mutation is, right? Where the change, amino acid it change in is. So yeah, just but, being a founder doesn't matter on its own. Right. I was going to say, but I could have a mutation that, you know, alters spike dramatically or alter yeah. something else dramatically. And it's not a founder effect whatsoever. That's right. That's right. So... Uh, Vinny Rack says hello to Vinny Rack. Hello, Vinny Rack. It's an echo here. Is that you as a kid? No, it's not, but it's a cute kid. It is a cute kid. What does Dr. Fauci say? How long to wait to get fully immunized after the second shot? (laughs) Well, I don't know what Dr. Fauci says, but I, I would say a month, Amy? I think so. Get fully immunized? What does that mean? Well, you know, fully your... immunized, like max out the m- amount of IgG you can produce? Or maybe make really good memory, memory B cells. I think it probably takes a little bit longer than a month after the second okay. shot. But... Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, Lori from Edmonton, so enjoying Amy's input. See, see Amy, people like you. It's good. You Martin got 515 people watching you. I know. Thank you for all the likes. 225. Look at that. I don't Martin. know. I don't now, see anything. Now, Martin writes a lot in, so I recognize you, Martin. Shout out. Might it ever be feasible to have an annual flu jab combined with a COVID-19 booster jab as one shot? Sure. Just have to test it, right? Yeah, I don't see why it can't be the new MMR. Yeah. Because we have measles, mumps, rubella all together, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
maybe the flu shot will be an mRNA vaccine, right? And okay. you could put the two together, yeah. Okay. Thank you for the, your gift to the world. I live for this podcast. So grateful for both you and Amy Life. Thank you. It's lovely sentiment. We really appreciate it. And I think Amy in particular is very happy to hear that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Keep listening. Keep learning. It's all good. I hear Pfizer's looking into a third vaccine as a booster, just with a stronger dose. Why would this be a good strategy instead of aiming towards point of infection? I don't know what point of infection is. No, I don't know. I'm not sure you and need I'm a third not sure booster. that I'm not sure that the third booster was a stronger dose. I thought that the idea was a third booster would be accommodating the variants. Is that right? That's what I thought. Hmm. Because I don't know what a, a stronger dose means. I mean, there's a ton of my mRNA already in there. Yeah, they're doing a third dose among people who've gotten the first uh, doses more than six months ago. And he, they're saying that they believe the, it will raise the antibody response 10 to 20 fold. So maybe if it declines after a time, this would boost it up. But I've never heard of such a thing. Have you, Amy? No. Here's the answer. It's Neolithic in the Archaeological Museum in Volos, Greece. Nice. Yeah, cool. you should be able to. You should be able to go this summer, yeah. I'm not going to Greece this summer. I have a grant. No, we have, we have work to do. Uh, your opinion on Canada doing four-month interval between Prime Boost, mRNA, and AstraZeneca based on two-month data from around the world. Due to supply shortage, this would get every 16 plus a single dose by June. I I think stretching out this the boost is fine. Uh, the reason they did three four weeks originally was to accommodate a rapid phase three trial design, but you don't need to go so quickly between doses. You can do it longer, right, Amy? Yes. Studies are in preprint that does lower viral load and probably results in less transmission. So that's one Israeli preprint that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. And the key here is probably results, right? Because they didn't actually measure infectious virus. You need to look at that because the PCR assay may not be telling you the right story. That's the limitation here. If people don't do infectious virus assay shedding, it's a big problem. They did not go and do podcasts. <laughs> Adam says, let's uh, have an idea. Let's ask the same question about transmission after vaccination a few hundred more times. Well, you know, in a chat, people don't know things have been answered. It's okay. I'm patient with that. Yeah. Uh, do you think not they will so come much. out with, with a polyclonal? <laughs> you don't think I'm patient? No, me. Not so I, much. Well, we're, we're a little different, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you think they'll come out with a polyclonal antibody treatment for several variants? Yes. Yeah, they'll mix monoclonals together. Sure. Absolutely. I think they already started. All right, two more questions or three more questions. And then oh, we have someone from the go. Philippines. That's good. Um, and They're having a horrible the, time, I think. Thank you, Matina, for your super chat. It was much appreciated. How many? Oh, this is interesting. I was. This is a journalist from CNN asked me this today. How many variants of the spike are theoretically possible? Are we talking a few thousand or more like uncountable trillions upon trillions? Well, I uh, guess in theory, it's 500 amino acids and you have 20 amino acid substitutions. It's 20 to the 20th at every position. In yeah, theory. In fact, probably only half of those are going to be viable, right? No, I don't think half of those are going to be viable. Less than half, you think? Oh, for sure. Yeah, so it's not trillions, not even a few thousand. I think it's less than 100. Uh, but we'll see. I think it's a very interesting question, but we don't have an answer. Of course, you said theoretically, so that theoretically, is... Theoretically, uh, it's the number of amino acids every position to the 20th. That's right. You must, 20, 20 different times possibilities. 20, right. Yeah, exactly. that's a huge number. It's a huge number. But, well, yeah, exactly. Okay. 
Uh, do all major vaccines in the West, Pfizer, Moderna, Oxford, J&J, Novavax, make the same prefusion, or are there notable differences? So Pfizer, Moderna, uh, J&J are all prefusion. Oxford is not a prefusion stabilized. Uh, I, I'm not sure about Novavax. Do you know, Amy, if it's prefusion or not? I think it I is. I think it is. I think it is. And, that, you know, the Oxford vaccine is a little it's a little different results, and that may be in part because it's not a prefusion. Who knows? Uh, Angela, thank you for your super chat. It's very much appreciated. <laughs> Were scientists looking at variants before the media started reporting? Yes. I mean, you can go back to the sequence database, nextstrain.org, and you can find these variants circulating early last year, but at very low levels. They're all there. And now they're being amplified because we have some population immunity that is selecting for some of them anyway. Right, Amy? Yes. Twiv with Theodore and Paul. The explorers. Right. Let's see. Right, what, one you want more. one more? One more and then it's time for me to go. Why many inactivated virus vaccines such as India's Covaxin have advantages for coverage versus variants, mix and use as booster. Oh, may inactivated vaccines have an advantage. Uh, I don't think so. I think they're harder to make than an mRNA vaccine. An mRNA vaccine you can really make immediately. You just reprogram the plasmid. With inactivated, you have to grow the virus, inactivate it, purify it, and it's not easy. Can we say cutter? Cutter incident with polio vaccine in the 50s, incomplete inactivation, yeah. Yeah, not so good. Thank you for your participation, Amy. Oh, my pleasure. All right. See you tomorrow. See you. We're see going tomorrow studio shopping. Yeah, Amy and I are going to look at studio space tomorrow. Yeah, we're Th going studio shopping. Thank you for your help, Amy. It's all good. See you in the it's morning. All, good. all right. Bye. 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 All right, folks. Now you're stuck with me. Uh, for another 45 minutes or so. Michelle, what made the 1918 Spanish influenza virus so much more virulent than normal? Well, this is a question that um, many virologists and non-virologists ponder all the time. Um, they don't really know because we have the virus recovered in a in a high containment lab you can do experiments it seems to be more virulent we don't exact in in animals anyway but not as you know in people there are all different factors you have pneumonia in people so we really don't know and remember there were no antimicrobials back then not really clear what's going on uh, i want to show you my my coronavirus do you want to see it So this was sent to me by the company that made the uh, the model that Amy just showed you. I have to get the uh, the name, but this is a uh, a three D printed model. So first here we have it cut in half, and there's the RNA, right? And then I'm going to turn it around. Let me get that comment off there. Sorry about that. And we have the spikes, right? And they're all based on the three dimensional structure, and then in, embedded in the membrane, which is gray. You have some other viral proteins, uh, like like the M protein and so forth, which no one talks about. And all, everyone just talks about spike. And so here, the, the cool part of this is that you have an antibody molecule, 3D printed, which binds to its epitope. <laughs> it's, it's, it's magnetic, right? It's out of focus, I'm sorry, because my camera is not autofocus. Let's put it in my plane. So that's the antibody. And then this guy here, this is a, a tri-nanobody. So he put, you know, nanobodies are just the antigen combining site of a, of a camelid antibody. And you can make multimers and you have protein linkers. So this, the idea here is this would bind, since spike is a trimer, you know, the, the, it could bind all three um, uh, epitopes on the spike trimer. I think that's great to illustrate this to students and so forth. And then we'll put our antibody back on here. So this, um, I forgot what the name of the,
company was. I'm going to announce it in TWIV on Friday, and you can go buy these. Isn't that great? And it's it's stuck on a base. Gosh, I love it. They could make this three feet in diameter if you want. Of course, it would cost you a lot of money. All right, back to the questions. Picture is worth a thousand words though, right? Uh, if one gets vaccinated and then gets corona, how sick can one get? Well, if you're, you know, if you're vaccinated and then you, 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 you get some protection starting at about eleven to fourteen days after the first booster, so you're not going to get that sick, and it will probably prevent hospitalization and death. That's what the data are saying so far. <laughs> Have any new giant viruses been discovered this year? I haven't seen new ones yet. This is only uh, beginning of March. There'll be there'll be some for sure. We'll talk about them because we love giant viruses on TWIV. Are there studies in people that are immune against COVID? Can we just clone their antibodies? So if you're naturally resistant to infection or disease, it's probably not because you have antibodies because you've never been exposed. At least SARS and SARS-CoV-2, of course, is a brand new virus. But you have other genetic changes that make you more resistant. And yes, people are very interested in that. And they would like to know what genes they're in and so forth. So people, those people are having their genome sequenced. And there's already been a few papers published on that as well. Dr. Griffin tweeted out an article that seems to indicate there appears to be reinfections in Brazil. Any thoughts? Brazilian diagnostic errors are the real threat of reinfection. So I'd there have certainly been true examples of reinfection throughout the world, not just Brazil. You have to be careful in Brazil because to prove that it's a reinfection, you have to sequence the virus and show it's a different sequence from the first one. And that's just not happening in many instances, right? So you don't know if people were immune to begin with uh, and so forth. So it's a very high bar, and so I'm very suspicious. The Daniel will tell you reinfections are rare. And I, you know, you may get reinfected in Brazil, but maybe you don't die and you don't go into the hospital. So that's all that matters, I think. Uh, we, we talked earlier about the mRNA. So they're made by in vitro transcription. And I, I think there are very few errors, but there are some for sure, but it doesn't really matter. What about ribosome misread? We had a doctor tell us that misread could lead to cancerous issues. Well, no, not, gonna, not with the mRNA vaccines. They're not going to cause cancer. mRNA misread will cause a slightly different protein, but it won't matter. It's not going to make a difference in the spike because you'll have enough of the right protein made. So this is just a non-issue. Yes, Amy was very happy tonight. So work is going well today. Amy is the... Plaque assay queen, yes. She does a lot of, every day. Uh, you said I don't get immunity right after my body clears the virus. needs to make a month. Does it mean I can be persistently reinfected? So, no, if you have just cleared the infection, you're, and let's say you've stopped um, shedding, within a couple of weeks, a month, you're going to have full-blown immunity it, it actually develops even more over the ensuing weeks. You're going to have good memory, but you should be protected against reinfection. <clears throat> Most of mechanisms by which the vaccine would trigger EBV. So when you, when you get a vaccine, you can have an inflammatory reaction, right? It's a normal reaction to an antigen. You make cytokines as the body is making antibodies and T cells against the antigen. Those, say if you get fever, that's one of the triggers for reactivation of a herpes virus. So that would be one mechanism. Any kind of stress causes reactivation of herpes viruses. So an inflammatory response is a form of stress. So that would be the mechanism. Look, Amy's gone, but let me answer this. Can parasites get infected by a virus? Absolutely. So Leishmania viruses exist. They're viruses that infect Leishmania because parasites, of course, are whole 
organisms, right? They have a cytoplasm and nucleus. Some of them are multicellular. So yeah, there are viruses of them. It's amazing. Now, why don't we have a vaccine for this antivirus that makes you sick? Well, it's too bad if that that Amy has left, but there are many there are over 120 antiviruses, and so it would be hard to make a vaccine for all of those. And the one that Amy works on, 68, it doesn't cause enough paralysis globally. There have only been 600 cases of paralysis or so since 2014 recorded in the U.S. So. You're not going to make a vaccine for that. And so they're thinking about monoclonal antibody therapy or others, but, you know, it's still early days. Uh, will they make an EBV vaccine? Uh, yes, for sure people are working on it um, because this is one where you get, most, most people get EBV when they go to college and they kiss other people, right? And because it's transmitted in saliva. So, yeah, you could immunize kids at an earlier age. And you could prevent mononucleosis and some cancers caused by EBV. If the vaccine triggers a cold sore, is it okay to use acyclovir? Well, with the caveat that I'm not a physician, I would take acyclovir or a derivative. It's, I, we have it in the fridge. And um, yeah, because that's how you would treat it. There's no reason why you wouldn't after the vaccine did it. How can we convince people that J&J &J is a good option? The apparent lower efficacy ratings are making some skeptical, but they're not actually. If you look at you know, the, the overall e efficacies in the 80s and against death and hospitalization, it's 100%. What, what more do you want? Put it this way. You could get mild COVID. After, you know, a certain fraction of the J&J &J vaccinated people could get mild COVID even after the vaccine. Who cares? You get mild all kinds of respiratory infections. What you don't want to do is go in the hospital and die. And these, this vaccine will prevent it. So that's what I would say. I got the Moderna, but let's say I hadn't gotten it and they said you can get J&J &J today. I take it. Absolutely. It's going to prevent me from dying. Does vaccine reaction severity correlate inversely with recipient age? Um. Not in in general, because older people have um, less efficient immune systems, right? <laughs> you took your eighty year old mom for a banana split to go after the shot. That's very good. Um, so a lot of older people don't have vaccine reactions, but I've heard, in fact, in this chat, many older people do have reactions as well. So it's not a hard fast rule. Okay, it's a generality, I would say. Yeah, Neanderthals are not here to defend themselves, right? The other thing we inherited some, by the way, someone just asked the question, um, you know, if you're resistant to COVID, what's going on? And I said, there's some genes you may have. And in fact, the genes that make us have severe COVID, some of them come from Neanderthals. It's, you know, we blame them, but they're not here to defend themselves. Yeah, I think you're right, uh, Adam. The, the Moderna and Pfizer results are kind of spoiling people. Everybody wants 95%, but you don't really need it as long as it prevents you from dying or going to the hospital, right? <laughs> Post-vaccine banana split should be standard of care. Yes, for sure. Yes, so this we mentioned earlier, Houston has all the variants that have been circulating. So this is really bad if they decide not to wear masks and go to restaurants and so forth, they're going to spread all these variants and make it a bad thing for everybody else. So I hope the people of Texas get that. <laughs> Everyone's defending the Neanderthals now. <laughs> it's great. Uh, uh, yeah, so I have a volunteer for making a glossary. That's great. Uh, that's great. Why does the federal government not demand that all data from Pfizer be released to the public? Well, all the data that went into the emergency use authorization is released. You can go on the FDA website and get that. And the stuff that's in progress, well, you, you can't release it until it's done, right? So I think that's fine. I don't think they're hiding anything. 
Uh, how do I uh, rate ivermectin? Um, so it seems to work in some cases to help with illness and mortality, but it doesn't seem to affect virus load, which is weird, right? So it's not impinging on virus levels. So it must be doing something else. And what that is, we don't know. But many people are starting to use it. I don't have a problem with it. But again, I'm not a doctor. I don't decide to treat. I look at it and say, is this working? And the trials say it can work. Not always, but it can. So a number of people are volunteering for this website, which is great. Uh, we had uh, Tom earlier and Romeo and David. Great. You can make the website. So you guys can email me. You can, you know, uh, twiv at microbe.tv or vincent at microbe.tv. And, and here is um, Tom who is going to do it. So thanks to all you, you folks. We'll, we'll coordinate something and, and uh, we'll get this up. Have there been any data collected to show asympt um, asymptomatic people end up with long-termers? Yes, you know, and I don't remember the numbers right now, but there are. And many asymptomatic infections turn out to be long long COVID. But I don't know the exact number. There's uh, Daniel Daniel mentioned it on the latest clinical update. I'm sorry I don't have it right right now. Should workers in nursing homes be have mandatory immunization? Well, I think so, but because I, I think it's important to protect the people in the nursing homes, right? I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't want to get vaccinated. It's The vaccines are perfectly safe, so I think so, but I don't think you're going to mandate it in many places. It's up to the individual nursing home. <laughs> Plant-related question. I wonder what method we, you would choose to isolate viruses that attack microalgae. Would a plaque assay work? It could. I've seen plaque assays with algae, green algae, where the algae make a lawn on the plate and then the virus makes holes, right? Um, yeah, you could. If the if the algae will grow on a monolayer in a culture, then you could do that. It would be perfect. And uh, Jim Van Etten, look up that name at the University of Nebraska. He's published uh, such plaque assays with chlorelli and, and viruses that infect them. San Diego, for adults who do not live in the same home, one dine inside all vaccinated, is this safe? Just the four adults. Yeah, it's fine. And, you know, when you're eating, you can't wear a mask, but you should, if there's anyone else in there, you should mask or they should mask. But it's just the four of you in a house. That's okay. Yeah, so we're now coming up on the on the swollen lymph nodes story, which, yes, you should get swollen lymph nodes um, after a vaccination. Well, you may. You, you, not everyone does. And your, your reaction can be mild or it can be serious. Headaches. Some people have to stay in bed all day. It's, it's all what we see. Carlita, thank you for your super chat. We answered your question before. Is there any news on the far UVC lamps used to kill viruses? Yeah, I know, I know that people are working on them. I've gotten a few e emails from people who, who say they're working on them, but you know, it's getting late, but maybe it'll be useful for down the road. If we need it at some point, but obviously it's not making an impact in this pandemic. Um, I've been wearing a mask and face screen in the supermarkets because people don't social distance. That's fine. Whatever makes you comfortable. I always wear a mask wherever I go outside. Yeah, so N95 with a surgical mask, that's fine. If a patient gets a sore arm or some other minor reaction, is that an indication that the patient is mounting a protective immune response? It is, but if you don't get one, if you don't get a sore arm or any kind of reaction, it doesn't mean you're not making an immune response, right? That's a weird thing, but your immune system can still work without giving you these signs and symptoms. 
Yeah, you took a, you went to the vet and the, and the vet's not wearing a mask. It's, yeah, I know. I don't get it. And in the um, downtown Manhattan, at the, all the way down at the end, a lot of people, I heard a lot of people aren't wearing masks. I don't get it. We're not out of this yet. We need another month or two. <laughs> yeah, Canada just approved AstraZeneca. Um, it's not a great, it's, it's a confusing vaccine and the data are weird because of that crazy study where they had some of the doses had a half dose. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because it could be a good vaccine, but I don't know why they chose to use not a pre-fusion stabilized spike. I think that might have been a mistake. Thank you, Wendy, for your super chat. To, to, uh, yeah, so Wendy's getting Moderna tomorrow, and she she would get Sputnik if that's all they offered. Um, Sputnik um, is fine. I looked at the phase three data, two different adenoviruses, very good protection. Wouldn't be a problem with me. But I wouldn't have said that after the phase one, two because it was too small, but it was fixed. How do virologists choose their viruses? Well, that's a good question. So the way most do is you work with someone, you get a PhD, and then you go do a post-PhD in a, for a few years in a lab. And usually the, whatever you work on in that lab is your virus. So I did my PhD on influenza virus. And then, then I did a postdoc on polio virus. So I ended up working on polio virus. But then you can change. Once you make your own lab and you work on, say, polio virus, then I changed to other viruses over the years. But usually you have some results on, say, poliovirus from your postdoc, and you can take those and write a grant proposal in your own lab. And that's good because it gives you a better chance at getting support for your, for your work. Any advice on how or, or not to vaccinate with an identification of CML leukemia? You talk, that's a question for Amy because her mom was in this situation. Um, and I don't remember what cancer she had, but she has, but she got vaccinated. But I don't know about CML. What is VP1, et cetera? So you're talking about probably when Amy was showing her virus model. Let's see if I have one. I don't have an enterovirus. So VPs are the capsid proteins. They're the proteins that make up the shell. And for her virus, enteroviruses, there are four of them. There are three on the outside and there's one on the inside. V stands for virion protein. What will happen if I choose to delay my second Pfizer dose for six weeks? Nothing. You'll be fine. As I said, the four weeks was chosen just to get the the trial, the phase three trial going in a reasonable amount of time. Otherwise, it would take a long time. You can delay it. It's not going to hurt the heart. It's not going to harm your immunity or your memory. Any data on person to person infection post vax? No. The only data we have are PCRs, which, in the case of a preprint out of Israel, a, a, a decrease uh, in the amount of PCR product after vaccination, but we don't know about transmission. That That's important to find out. But it suggests that there might be less RNA, which is good. Have I changed my mind about higher transmission? So, okay, we're going to do a, a twiv on this. I'm going to do a video. So originally, w way back a long time ago, December, I didn't think there was sufficient evidence that in the UK that virus had greater transmission. Now, what does transmission mean? Spread through the population. It doesn't just mean going through the air from one person to another, okay? It can be influenced by many different stages. And so I think a lot of people, when they hear transmission, they think air from the air from one person to another. Now, that UK variant subsequently went to many countries, and in some countries it dominated, and in some countries it did not. So what do you conclude from that? It's not just more transmissible. It depends where it goes. So what I have come to think is that these are some of these variants anyway, the UK, 
South Africa, the South American, they are, have more fitness. They have better fitness, which means they propagate better in some populations. Why? We don't know. It could be that they transmit better through the air, but we don't know that. It could be that the time of shedding is longer and you, you have a greater chance of infecting someone else. Their resistance to monoclonals may play a role in that. So there are a lot of reasons to explain the fitness. So transmission through the population, yes, some of them do that for sure. Not, not through the air, though. That's what I had originally objected to. So it's a little bit nuanced. That's where I am right now. But remember, these variants, when they go somewhere else, they don't always predominate. They don't always displace the other strains. So it's not something simple that's going on. And transmission is not just about the virus. It's about the population and the po habits of the population and so forth. So that may explain why a UK variant goes to California and it doesn't predominate. Anyway, we'll have more to say about that um, on TWIV and in, in my videos. Amy was very happy tonight. It's good. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I want her to uh, be happy. Um, yeah, 100% protection from death and hospitalization for the J&J. &J. Absolutely. At the first dose of AstraZeneca in Brazil, second in three months. It's okay. 12 months. No worries. This is a good question from Nepal. I'm curious if, if you could speculate as to um, why Nepal, India, and Pakistan have had such low COVID death rates. I was talking about this with Amy today. I really don't know. Because there are certainly other viruses that run rampant in these countries, right? And I have no idea. It has to do with the microbiome, the population genetics, which is different, and so forth. Really don't know. It's a good question. Thank you, DR, for your super chat. What mechanism in the J&J &J makes it effective with one dose? Oh, th that's simply because they, um, they designed it for one dose. They've been working on it for a number of years. They know... Uh, how much virus to give people so that one dose will give you the amount of immunity and the durability of it to make it effective, right? And so they've been working on adenovectors, in particular this one, for a long time. And so there was more experience compared to, say, the mRNA vaccines where they had to go with two doses. So that's um, that's that's how I look at it, yeah. vaccination at City Field, and I suspect that I already had COVID a year ago. I felt much better after I got it. Well, you're going to have a good immune response now. Thank you, Charlene, for your super sticker. Andrew wants to see a live stream. Hello, Andrew. Kia Ora from Pangaroa. Amy and Kathy Spindler and watch Vincent melt down in confusion. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> a virtual tour of Amy's lab one day. Yeah, I will have to help because I'd have to have the camera and move it around for her. I'm sure she would do it. Are there any mycophages that are used to fight fungal infections? There aren't any that have been approved, you know, using phages at all for any infections. Uh, approval is few and far between, which is not to say there won't be one day, but there are certainly phages that can deal with fungi for sure. Absolutely. Oh, good. I'm glad you, you like the book. Yeah, I, I showed it to you last time. I'll show it to you again. That's... Uh, Ahead of the Curve, it's a book, uh, a biography of David Baltimore by Shane Crotty, right? Shane Crotty is the immunologist who's doing so much good work these days. It's a very cool book. Uh, the Wall Street Journal has an animation. Yes, I think Amy sent that to me today. I don't have a subscription, but 
Oh, acellular pertussis. Thank you. T-D-A-P. Right, acellular pertussis. Thank you. What do I think is going on in Manaus? I don't know because the population immunity was high. I think that was an error. And someone said that because it's blood donations, it's biased. It's not a random sample. So I have to wait to see the data. German TDAP is DTP. It used to be DTP here, yeah. Diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis. But that was a different one. That, that was a cellular pertussis. Now it's acellular. It's just um, proteins, not cells. Here we go. Pregnant women are advised to take DTP with every pregnancy, so antibodies are passed to the fetus for protection. Bingo. Thank you. See, we crowdsource our information here. Now look at this. We have almost 550 people. I'm so pleased to see people interested in science. It's great. Will it be more difficult to make a negative mRNA vaccine? In other words, against the negative strand RNA virus? No, you just make the mRNA, which is the complement. It's a piece of cake, as we say, in the business Oh, this is an interesting question. So someone had underarm lymph node removed, right, for breast cancer. Should they be vaccinated in the hip? I don't know. the. I'm, I'm not a person to answer that, but both armpits, I presume, lymph nodes. That's a good question for um, Daniel. I'm going to make it a favorite so that I can remember it. A lot of good comments here. They're not questions, but they're comments. Les, thank you for your super chat. Much appreciated. Yeah, the H5N8 um, has been infecting people. Uh, you know, the extent of transmission, we'll see. I'm not sure if um, it's going to transmit extensively. Uh, is it possible for respiratory syncytial virus and coronaviruses to recombine? These are viruses of different families, and they the RNAs are different polarity. RSV is negative strand, coronas are plus strand, so there's no way they're going to recombine. Just minuscule possibility, basically not going to happen. An allergist suggested that reactions to your second dose, if they're strong, suggest you might be genetically susceptible to the cytokine storm. No, there's no evidence for that whatsoever. None. They're just is speculating. You're welcome. You're welcome for all those who are thanking us. Thank you, Eric. Good to see you. I have an artwork by Eric in my office. A lot of talk about universal corona vaccine. Thoughts on feasibility, similar challenges to universal flu. A paper just came out today in Science from Gary Nabel at the Vaccine Research Institute. Uh, experimental universal flu vaccine tested in non-human primates looks pretty good. I think for coronas, yeah, a lot of people are talking about it, but you have to find conserved residues. There are some, but whether they're enough is not clear. Frankly, I, I, <laughs> I, I think a broadly acting antiviral would be better. You could use it at the beginning of an outbreak and stop the outbreak, but now people are going to work on a universal corona for sure. What came first, 96 well plates or 96 pipette tips per box? Oh, I used to get 96 pipette tips per box way before there were 96 well plates. So that's what I think, but I could be wrong. The UK has a higher um, R0. Well, the, the R0 is not just calculated from viral properties. It's calculated from the host as well. So that's why uh, we don't know. And it goes into different populations and the R0 is different. It'll be some time before this is sorted out because right now the observations are epidemiological and we need virological observations to sort it out. <laughs> you, you feel that time speeds up tenfold 
when the stream starts? You mean because things are going by quickly and that sort of thing? Has the Chinese vaccine been trialed against the variants? I don't know. I have no information on that. That's an interesting question. Now, thinking post-pandemic, where is your favorite conference location? I like a lot of places, you know. Um, uh, I, I don't have a favorite, but I like Europe a lot. I'd love to go there. I've had an invitation to Germany for this fall, but they're probably going to move it to the spring. I've been to Germany the most for meetings. I'd love to go back to Japan for a meeting. I really like Japan. But I don't have a favorite. I, I, I just like different, I like new places. How, how is it possible for a PCR to produce false positives? Incorrect time, temperature. Uh, I had a false positive months ago. Yeah, there are a couple of reasons. Off-target priming. Um, user error is a big one. Contamination and that sort of thing. Good question, Hugh. Is there any difference in dose for elderly for COVID like the flu shot? Not so far. Um, you know, for the flu shot, they recognized that the the regular dose wasn't effective at protecting them. And so that's why they upped it. But they had to do a clinical trial, of course. And so we're going to see in the next year or so how older people are protected. You know, in the clinical trials, they're just as protected as everyone else. So I suspect that's not going to be an issue. But if it is, they'll pick it up and fix it. Uh, why can't they incorporate variants into the same vaccine? So it turns out the FDA has said you don't have to do a new trial. You could make your vaccine, the mRNA vaccines, to adapt to the variants, and then you can just sell them. So that's good news. We don't have to waste any time. Waste any time. Okay, good night. People are going to sleep. We just have eight more minutes here. How can J&J &J just take one shot? That's how they developed it. They have a dosage, and they have a lot of experience with the vector, which said... Um, they could do just one shot. Can you do PCR for multiple viruses? Absolutely. It's called multiplexing. You can put lots of primers into one reaction if you don't know what someone's infected with, and you can do that. It's, it happens all the time. There's a respiratory panel. There is an enteric panel. There's a neurological panel. Yeah. When do you still call it a spike? It's a spike like a protein, technically. And for different viruses, it can be called different things like the hemagglutinin and neuraminidase of influenza virus. But for coronaviruses, they've always called them spikes. Did the Chinese give the children the vaccine? I don't know. Does anyone know? Good question. So they say the South Africa variant requires more antibodies compared to UK. Yes. However, antibodies may not be the whole story. You know, the, the J&J &J worked beautifully in South Africa. And I bet the antibodies wouldn't react as well with the variant. And I think it's more than antibodies. I think the T cells are really important and the variants don't affect T cell responses. And that's something that very few people have been looking at. Since the, this, there seems to be a lot of N protein with a lot of antibody be needed to get into cells. So not necessarily, not necessarily. It depends. You know, I know what you're thinking. You'd need a lot of antibodies to, to neutralize all the ends, but some, you know, even on the surface, you don't need to block all the attachment sites to, to block attachment. You can tr cause a conformational change in the protein. And that happens with influenza virus. So it may be a similar thing. I'm going to look for some, uh, Super Chats, and, and thank them before we end up here. T. Klepper, thank you so much. Why have cases dropped? Masking, distancing, infections have gone way up, so you get some natural immunity, and vaccination. That's why they're going down. And don't be surprised if people stop masking in Texas, the, the cases go up again. After your last video on variants, many people had questions about how the sequence of an isolate is determined. So it's usually a consensus sequence. Even though there are many sequences in the in a single person, you, you have an average of that, and that's what they post on the website. Thank you, Martin, for your super sticker. Thank you, Arthur, for your super chat. 
And thank you, Neva from Texas. Hope you're all safe there. I'm sure Neva's going to wear her mask. <laughs> Neva's a longtime Twiv, Twiv listener. We're just waiting for the to be eligible for a vaccine, and you guys keep me busy. I wonder if you're all going to leave when this is over. I'd be sad. So I'd come here with Amy, and there'd be nobody here. <laughs> We'd have to stop. We'd have to stop. I'm going back and looking up uh, are, if the vaccine is 100% effective for hospitalization but 80% for mild disease. Are the people who get mild disease likely to be individuals who would have ended up in the hospital if unvaccinated? I don't know. That's a great question. It could go either way, right? It could go either way. Cheryl says, if you get Moderna, what type of antibody test should you get? Oh, N. You have to look for... If you want to know if the vaccine works, you need an S antibody test, right? Because the spike is what's in the Moderna vaccine. It's encoded in the mRNA. And um, so you measure spike antibodies. But if you want to know if you had been infected before, you would do an N antibody because the vaccines, for the most part, don't have N. But some of them, um, some of them, uh, what was I going to say? Some of the vaccines are inactivated particles, so they would generate um, uh, antibodies against um, against that. Another super chat here. Thank you, Christina. Appreciate it. It will stay. Good. Thank you. At least there'll be one person here. <laughs> I'm sure some some people will stay. I'm just being um, pessimistic, right? These are pessimistic times, and I'm not pessimistic about viruses, but when it comes to people, I get pessimistic. Could we conceivably pass this virus in vitro until it mutates enough to evade immunity and then keep that sequence on hand in case wild-type convergence on it? Would that be a waste? Well, you don't actually have to passage it. Some people have passaged virus and selected resistance to monoclonals in the lab, but you can also do uh, binding experiments. You can do b computational experiments as well. So. Um, we know pretty much a lot of the sites, we know all the sites that can change to get resistance to the existing monoclonal therapies and many more as well. Press, yeah, like before we leave, which is in three minutes, um, press the like if you haven't done it. If you, if you've already done it, don't press it because that negates it. Fan club, that's cool. I don't know how you would do that. Uh, there's no risk for long-term COVID from the vaccine because the immune response is not strong enough, cause enough damage to the body. So I think the mRNA vaccines, um, uh, they're, they are, yeah, they're not inducing as, as broad a inflammatory response as infection. There are many more viral proteins made during infection. So we're, the problem is we don't know exactly what triggers the inflammatory storm after infection. So, um, I think the vaccines are not likely to do that, but we will see. We will see. Uh, the the last twiv right last Friday with the two with the uh, Janet Smith and Eva Harris suggests that non COVID chats are harder to follow. Yeah, but I will I will answer your questions in a way that you can understand. A year of t talking about Corona, yeah, it gives you some background. You guys are learning about viruses for sure. Any advice how to convince my 55-year-old parent to get a dose of AZ? Because it'll probably keep you out of the hospital and keep you from dying. You may still get mild COVID, but it's worth it for that. How do we develop two vaccines from scratch in less than six months? You're clueless about long hauler treatments. What a great question. The, these are hard problems. A vaccine is actually easy because we've made so many vaccines, right? Long hauler is something we just don't get. As I said, we don't know what parts of the immune response are causing it. We're going to find out. As you know, the NIH just put a billion and a half dollars into it. And so let's hope that we figure it out and not forever. 
not forever. So we should change this to virus Q and A. Yeah, that's not a bad idea because more people would get because a, a Q and A with A and V doesn't really tell you what the subject is, right? The reason I called it that is because I wanted to give Amy some publicity. But uh, yes, I, it's a good idea. Virus Q and A or something like that. We'll do that. All right, folks. That's it for tonight. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the super chats and super stickers. I love you all. And it's been a pleasure answering your questions. I really look forward to this uh, every week. And if I stop, I'm going to have withdrawal. So um, see you next time. All right. Uh, the next time, a week from today, same time. See you all then. Bring your questions, of course. Or you can just chat.